Nestled deep within the heart of the Indian Ocean lies a hidden gem, the sprawling Mascarene Plateau. This colossal expanse of volcanic rock reveals itself in only a few select spots, while the majority remain shrouded just below the water's surface. It forms a truly remarkable but isolated shallow water haven. Welcome to the GeoSavvy. Subscribe and let's dive in. One of the aspects that makes this place so captivating is the scarcity of information about it. Situated hundreds of miles away from the nearest land, this region poses significant challenges for exploration. It remains largely uncharted until relatively recently, with initial surveys conducted only in the late 1960s. These early investigations allowed us to grasp the topography of the Mascarene Plateau, revealing a network of plateaus including the Amarante, Seychelles, Fortune Banks in the north and Reunion, Mauritius and Nazareth Bank in the south. Yet, the most extensive section of the plateau, the Saya de Mala Bank, stretching over 60,000 kilometers, remains hidden beneath the waves, making it the remotest corner of an already remote continental fragment. The isolation and inaccessibility of the Mascarene Plateau only added to its allure. It wasn't until 2002 that a comprehensive scientific expedition was launched to thoroughly investigate the geology, biology, and ecology of this underwater wonderland. However, what initially appeared as a routine research expedition concealed a grander plan one that aimed to transform this oceanic oasis from a secluded sea meadow into a hub of scientific research and international trade. The audacious scheme involved creating new land in the middle of the ocean using an unprecedented method, an approach that purportedly harnessed the power of electricity to build islands. To unravel the true motives behind this expedition, we must delve deeper into the report. The expedition leader, Professor Wolf Hilberts, emerges as a central figure in this intriguing story. He was the visionary behind a concept he called Cybertexture, which sought to blend cybernetics and architecture, effectively integrating the principles of evolutionary process into technology. Wolf's ambitious vision extended to constructing cities in the heart of the ocean, capitalizing on the remarkable building capabilities of corals. Instead, he proposed covering a basic metal structure with corals to strengthen it. However, corals proved reluctant to attach to cold, hard metal surfaces, and their slow growth rate posed further challenges. Undeterred, Wolf embarked on a quest to find alternative methods to utilize corals' mineral building prowess. Frustrated by the limitations of relying solely on corals for his ambitious oceanic dreams, Professor Wolf Hilberts embarked on a quest to decipher the secrets of coral mineralization. He sought to unravel how these fascinating organisms extracted minerals from seawater to construct their calcium carbonate shells. His goal was clear, mimic this natural process to build structures of his own. After nine years of relentless pursuit, he published a groundbreaking paper in the Journal of Oceanic Engineering in 1985. Describing his experiments and the applications of a revolutionary technique he dubbed electrode deposition of minerals in seawater. This marked a pivotal moment in his journey. Hilberts had a vision of using electricity to spur the formation of mineral deposits from ocean water, creating what he called bio-rock. The method was elegantly simple, submerged two conductors in ocean water containing naturally occurring salts like sodium, calcium, and magnesium. These conductors would facilitate an electrical current, leading to a formation of a positive anode and a negatively charged cathode. The positively charged ions in the water would gravitate towards the cathode, accumulating as a mineral layer, bio-rock. This process represented a significant breakthrough, leading Hilberts to patent his innovative mineral accretion technology. It offered a glimmer of hope for achieving his grand vision of cyber texture where nature's principles were integrated into technology. Now, the challenge was to harness energy from within the system, mirroring how corals harness sunlight for growth. Enter solar panels, a burgeoning technology in the early 1990s. Hilberts envisioned a monumental design, the coral arc. This intricate structure featured a triangular metal lattice anchored to the ocean floor, equipped with a towering mast supporting a vast solar array. The coral arc aimed to harness the sun's energy to power its own mineral accretion process, truly merging evolutionary processes with technology. With a coral arc, 
Hilberts envisioned constructing autonomous islands, ushering in a new era of marine restoration and ecosystem engineering. These islands could serve as habitats for corals and other marine life, effectively repairing damaged reefs and spawning new ones. It was a visionary solution that could potentially transform the way we interacted with the ocean. By the early 1990s, Hilbert was scouting for the ideal location to test his audacious concept, an underwater city. He chose the Ampere Seamount, situated 300 miles off the coast of North Africa, a strategic location at the mouth of the Mediterranean Sea. In interviews, he revealed his dream of constructing a city named Autopia, founded on principles of sustainability and resource utilization. However, the legality of such ocean-grown cities posed a significant challenge. Hilberts recognized that there was no legal precedent regarding the ownership of newly formed islands in international waters. This hurdle highlighted the complexity of his ambitions, where political, legal, and environmental factors converged. His next step was an experiment on Skirky Bank in the Mediterranean Sea an international waters territory claimed by both Italy and Tunisia within their exclusive economic zones. Hilberts aimed to establish a presence, stake a claim, and see how countries would respond. Lawyers were prepared, but the outcome remained shrouded in mystery. While Hilbert's dreams were undeniably visionary, they also ventured into uncharted waters, both scientifically and legally. His pursuit of merging nature's genius with technological innovation pushed the boundaries of what seemed possible. Yet, it underscored the intricate web of challenges that arise when humanity seeks to colonize and exploit the ocean's vast resources. In his quest to pioneer cyber texture, Professor Wolf Hilberts embarked on an audacious expedition, envisioning self-sustaining underwater structures powered by solar energy and inspired by coral mineralization. However, this audacious dream encountered a series of formidable challenges. The foremost obstacle was finding the right location for his experiment. To avoid territorial disputes, Wolf chose the Seychelles Sayat Amalia Bank, an expansive area in international waters. Yet building such a colossal underwater structure hundreds of miles from land required substantial funding and logistical prowess. Convincing the skeptical scientific community and investors of his unconventional idea added to the challenge. Wolf tackled these challenges by assembling a diverse team of experts, including marine biologists, geophysicists, and logistics specialists. This multidisciplinary approach lent credibility to the expedition, securing funding from the Lighthouse Foundation in Hamburg, Germany. The 2002 expedition faced adversity due to unfavorable weather and logistical constraints. Nevertheless, Wolf and his team managed to construct a scaled-down version of his coral arc, named the Sire Star. This structure aimed to harness solar energy for mineral accretion and support marine ecology. Despite deviations from the original plan and challenges encountered during the expedition, the Saya star's success became evident with the formation of hydrogen bubbles, indicating mineral accretion. While Wolf's ambition to establish cyber texture as a viable concept may not have gained widespread recognition, the Seychelles expedition left an enduring legacy. The expedition yielded valuable scientific insights into the previously unexplored Syat Amelia Bank, enriching our understanding of its geology and biodiversity. Although Wolf fell short of realizing his dream of a self-sustaining island powered by solar energy, his expedition unintentionally advanced our knowledge of the Earth's oceans. It serves as a testament to the unforeseen benefits of when scientific curiosity converges with visionary ambition, even when the outcome deviates from the original dream. Thank you for watching. Follow for more.